I was contacted by Colin, and I unfortunately do not want to butcher his last name, so I'll put it on the screen for you. And he was making a cutting board for his mother and had some cutoffs that he wanted to send to me and have me take a shot at turning them into a blank. These are really gorgeous. They're going to be an extremely challenging turn because they are not only in grain, but they are 10 different species of wood, some very soft like this cedar and some harder like the Bacote and the uh, Purple Heart. So I think it's gonna be a challenging turn. I hope I'm up to it. I've chosen a cigar kit with a gold finish. I've got my tubes here and I'm gonna take this blank and prep it to be turned. I've got the center marked on both of my blanks and I'm ready to drill, but my 10 millimeter drill bit is a standard drill bit. It's not a wood bit. You can see the wood bit has this little point on it and I can start it right in that dimple and drill perfectly down the center of my blank. This style blank will tend to crawl and I've had holes end up not down the center. It'll start a little off and drill right out the side of the blank. So we're gonna use this starter bit and we're gonna start our hole right down the center and then we'll chase it with this bit to make sure we go right through the middle of our blanks. I'm set up with my starter bit and my first blank. And what I'm going to do before I actually drill is I'm just going to put a mark on both sides of the blank. And I know that this is facing the front of the drill press because I'm going to remove this blank to start the hole in this one. And when I put this back into the drill press, I want to make sure I put it in the same orientation that it was initially drilled. Now with the starter hole in the blank, I should be able to guide my 10 millimeter bit right down the center. That looks great. I've got my tubes roughed up and plugged. They're ready to be inserted into the blanks. Let's mix our epoxy. I've got the cap of this cigar pin between centers. I'll have to turn the lower section or the body section separately simply because I'm using turn between center bushings and these are true turn between center bushings. They don't have a pass through hole in them to allow me to use a mandrel. Otherwise, I probably would pop these onto uh, my mandrel saver and turn them both at the same time. Won't be an issue. 
Uh, I just finished sharpening my skew. It is as sharp as I can get it. Um, I am a little nervous about this blank because it's all cross grain. This was an ingrain cutting board and this is all cross grain. So I don't know what's gonna happen when I start turning it. It can either be go really well and look amazing or it can be a disaster and just tear this blank apart. We won't know until we get turning. So let's find out what's gonna happen. So far, not too bad. Um, I've had a couple of spots where it felt a little rough and I thought, oh man, I better back off on the pressure uh, because I don't want to lift any of the grain. It is at the end of the blank sort of rolling the grain over. I don't want to tear that off. Uh, when I get down to the bushing, I should be able to ride right off onto the bushing and uh, we won't have that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and strop my skew so that it's nice and sharp. We're going to keep it as sharp as possible and we'll come back and take another couple passes on this blank. And stop, we are done. I'm very happy with the cap. Before I start turning the body, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sand this cap down. And what I'm gonna do is if you're turning it with the normal way the lathe turns, the blank is very smooth. But if you turn it the opposite direction, you can feel the grain uh, scratching against your finger. So what that means is I, I have laid the grain down in this direction. I'm gonna flip it over on the lathe and we're gonna sand in the opposite direction. And I, I plan to flip the blank between each grid of sandpaper so that I can I can raise the, gr raise the grain as I'm sanding each time I sand, I'll get a much smoother finish. Um, the other thing I think I'm gonna do before I flip it, I think I'm gonna put one coat of thin CA on there because this walnut and Bacote and this little piece of, uh, I believe it's Paducah up here, uh, might stain some of this lighter uh, material. So I'm going to put one coat of thin CA, then we're going to flip and uh, sand. I just finished sanding the blank, but this, this looks gorgeous here. Golly, take a look at that. And that looks beautiful. Let me get it off the lathe. Let's get the body on here and let's see what, uh, what we can do to make the body uh, look amazing. Let's, let's just keep our fingers crossed. We can get it turned and we can end up with a really nice looking pen. This is the body blank, and I've got it on the lathe backwards. This is actually the nib end. This would be the center band end, but I find it's easier for me to curve down towards a, uh, towards a smaller bushing going toward the headstock. So uh, I went ahead and flipped it just for that reason.
lower half of the blank turned out super nice. Once again, I'm gonna flip it to uh, raise that grain and we're gonna start a little higher up in the grits uh, so we don't have the issue with scarring. She sanded up nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and we'll put a CA finish on it and see what it looks like. I have both halves of my blank on my mandrel saver mandrel with my turn between center bushings and we are ready to apply a CA finish. We're gonna start by cleaning the blank. I'm using a little denatured alcohol and I'm just gonna take any dust that might be sitting on the outside of the blank off. I've re-wetted the pad and now we'll start the lathe and just scrub the blank. And you can see what this is gonna look like. Take a look at that when it's finally shined up. We're gonna let it spin, let the denatured alcohol evaporate. We'll be back in a few minutes to uh, put a CA finish on this blank. This blank is good and dry and we're ready to apply our first coat of thin CA. Take a look at that. Wow, it's really gonna soak in. I'm gonna have to use extra coats because this is in grain. I normally use about five. We'll probably put seven, eight coats of thin on here just to make sure we get a nice, you can see how it's uneven where it's shiny there and it's dry there. I kind of want the blank to be shiny all the way around. We want to eliminate the dry areas and I'll keep applying thin and letting it soak in until those dry areas all but disappear. And then we'll move on to our medium CA. I'll come back and show you what the blank looks like when we get to that point. I've got five coats of thin on here and it is covering way better than I ever expected. I'm using the Mercury Flex Thin. Uh, really happy with that. It's nice and shiny, no dull areas. I'm gonna let it spin for just a little bit longer. Uh, make sure it all dries. I had a little bit of a panic moment here a minute ago. A hair got onto my uh, blank and when I stopped the lathe, I could see it, and I was working feverishly to get it pulled out of the CA before the CA cured, and I was able to do that, but uh, boy, you talk about a, a panic moment. We're going to let this spin a few minutes longer, and then I'm going to move on to my medium CA, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like uh, right before we buff it. Last coat of CA has been applied. I did hit it with a little activator at the very end just to make sure everything was locked in. Uh, so it's got a little bit of a dull effect to it. That'll all go away as soon as I start buffing uh, or polishing with the micro mesh pads. First thing we're gonna do is get it off of these nonstick bushings and we're gonna get the ends squared over on our sanding disc and then we'll get it back between centers and we will buff each blank independent of, uh, of the other. And I will show you what they look like as I finish each of the blanks. The cap blank has been micro meshed. It looks amazing. I have not even buffed it yet. This is one of the things about ingrain. It's extremely difficult to turn, or at least it has always been for me. So I was really happy when I was able to turn this blank. But uh, when you do turn it and put a finish on it, the chatoyance or the shine that you get from the blank is absolutely brilliant. So I'm gonna take this off the lathe. We're going to get the uh, body blank on here. I'm gonna go ahead and micro mesh it. And uh, when we're done, I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. But then I'm going to hit them on the buffer for a few minutes, the buffing wheels, and uh, get this pressed into a pin kit. So I could not be happier. Just take a look at how that shines. I love it. Here's the body blank. It is equally as impressive as the cap blank. It just absolutely gorgeous. It looks like that finish is an inch thick. I absolutely love it. Um, I am going to get both of these over to the buffing wheels. We'll buff them up, and then we will meet at the table where we will press this into a pin kit. We are at the point of assembly and I laid out all of my components. I was at the point of pressing the first component, which would be the nib into the lower blank, which would be the longer blank. But if you take a look at the back of the longer blank, it's actually sized for the cap, the lower part of the cap. I mixed my bushings up when I went to turn the pin and these two components are reversed. The cap actually used the uh, body bushings and the body actually used the cap bushings. So I royally messed that up after all of that work and I hate it because if you look at that blank, it's absolutely stunning. But thankfully, Colin sent me a second blank. There were two blanks in the package. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this blank. We're gonna get another set of tubes and we're gonna return this pin and we'll be extra careful the second time around to make sure that we put the bushings on the right half of the pin. I'll come back and show you that pin at the point of assembly once it's ready to go. I turned a second set of blanks and we're ready to start the assembly process. We'll put the nib into one end of the body blank. We're gonna use a bushing to protect 
my blank from uh, getting damaged in the press. Let's go ahead and press that into place. Need to press this little grommet into the other end of the body blank. and slide the refill in, put the transmission on. Keep a little ball off the end of the ink. Wow, that thing is really stuck on there. There we go. Got a little bit of a problem there. My ink is not retracting all of the way. I wonder if my replacement tube was not the proper length. I do have a fix for that, and uh, I'm gonna work with it a little bit, and I'll show you what that fix is here shortly. Let's press our cap into the back of the blank. I'm gonna use my pushing once again for protection. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second here. I'm having a difficult time with that wanting to start. Oh, I see the problem. My bushing is so long that it's catching the end of this inside of the uh, uh, inside of the blank. Let me grab a bushing from a big bin kit, which will not have this long post on it. Got a shorter bushing here. It'll do the same exact job of protecting the end of my blank. Line everything up. Now we should be able to press that into place. Luckily, I didn't apply a whole lot of pressure, so I don't have to worry about uh, that I damaged the end of that. We do need a little bit more. There we go. That fit nicely. We'll get these bushings out of the way, and we'll press this little collar into the other end of the cap blank. really nice looking there we go now the ink seems to be retracting fully I bet the spring just stuck it's a beautiful pen I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today for the turning of this end grain cutting board cutoff uh, into a beautiful cigar pen this was, uh, this was a challenging one for me because I've had bad luck with ingrain in the past, but uh, I made two sets of blanks. The first set where I put the bushings on the, uh, the wrong end of the cap and body, and then the second one, and had no issues um, making or turning ingrain. So I used a skew on both of them, uh, really happy with that, and... Uh, the pen turned out beautiful. I'm so excited to have it. Colin, thank you for sending me uh, the cutoffs from the cutting board that you made for your mother. I truly appreciate it. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.